First, how would you feel if you'd been charged with the most heinous of crimes, knowing you were innocent? That's what happened to a prom prominent Nottinghamshire councillor who finally saw child sex offences against him dropped on Monday. Now, Jason Zadrosny from Sutton Ashfield has told BBC Radio Nottingham he believes he's been the victim of a smear campaign by political opponents. I've been to see him. It's been pretty horrific for a number of reasons. Obviously, you know, you always get people looking at you a little bit strangely. Do but, they? Well, yeah, you, you get that when, when you've had such a horrific thing. It's the worst thing that you can be accused of, very publicly, front page of our local paper. It made all the national papers. This is my hometown, and people have been remarkably supportive. I think the worst thing that happened was, just a few weeks after it, my father had a huge heart attack and died, so never got to see me clear my name. Morning, kidder. Morning. <laughs> Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you as well. There's a man with the cleaning cart at the Idle Wall Shopping Centre. Just before election, didn't he? Like it. Because we were, they were, you know, we were a planned yeah, job. 40, yeah. 40 days before yeah. the election. Yeah. 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 And as you saw on the news, it's uh, dropped with nothing at all. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Stinks yeah. Of it. Just well done, by the way. So sitting here in a coffee shop in the Idle Wall Shopping Centre is not presumably what you'd have planned for this week. I thought I was going to be in court for the full two weeks, so it's rather nice to be enjoying a cup of hot chocolate with you instead. Yeah, it's a bit of a shock to the system. What was it like finding out that the whole thing had collapsed on the day that you turned up suited and booted in court? I mean, obviously it was the best outcome. I was delighted that all the charges were dropped and they realised that they'd got no evidence, which we'd been saying all along. I do almost feel a bit robbed. For all this time, I've wanted to have my day in court and say, not only was there no evidence, but to be found properly not guilty and, and stand up in the dock and say that. The whole thing's been a, a colossal cockle, actually, on behalf of the police. They arrested me two and a half years ago. It took them year and a half before they decided to charge me and all on basically the word of somebody who made these allegations there's never been any evidence presented what do you think's gone on clearly somebody's either deliberately falsified the information or it's been a human error so i think somebody's had a vendetta or somebody's been told to do it and clearly we intend to sue on that basis so that i can make sure that this doesn't happen to anybody else is there something politically fishy going on here I've always thought that. It's no secret that the Labour Party thought that this was a tight seat and they were very, very frightened about us winning. I don't think it's ever helped that we have a politicised police force. We have a, a political police and crime commissioner. Now, I'm reasonably confident that he's had no direct involvement, but he certainly knew about my impending arrest. He was briefed on stuff. There's certainly something that stinks about the level of politics in, in how this case has been handled. There, the thoughts of Jason Zadrosny, and there's more from him, especially these uh, allegations, really, that this might be politically motivated. Coming after the news at 8 on BBC Radio Nottingham. Well, Paul Bacon's been listening to this. He's a retired solicitor. He's worked on some of Nottinghamshire's most high-profile criminal cases. Morning, Paul. Morning. How unusual is it for a case to collapse right at the start of the trial, for, for no evidence effectively to be offered as everyone's standing in court? A really odd really strange um i mean the position is that people are interviewed at the police station uh, and can give their account and then that's weighed in the balance and the decision is made whether to charge somebody and you've got to get to that level then after that the crown prosecution service weigh up the evidence and judge whether to carry on and then the papers go to uh, a barrister who will work, work for the crown prosecution to work out, work out whether the case carries on and you know to get to the court door absolutely unbelievable i mean in my experience it's, i can't honestly think of a case except in you know in tragic circumstances where maybe the main prosecution witness has, has got a terminal illness or died you know what i mean that sort of thing but for no apparent reason there's no and no information available which says uh, this case is being dropped because not you know the witness is, is ill or whatever so it's a really really unusual circumstance and Jason Zdrozny very clearly saying there that uh, it, there was no evidence. It, it basically was one person's word against another. So, how, again, how unusual is that, that you have a court case based on one person's word against another? I, I imagine many of these sexual abuse case stories are, are a bit like that. They are. Um, but the Crown, Crown Prosecutor's Service have to weigh up whether they've got a reasonable prospect of success. And you normally wouldn't just proceed on, on that. He would need some corroborative evidence to try and support the prosecution case. Um, so it's, it's, it's 
odd. I mean, it really is all very peculiar. And uh, I have to say, I can understand his concern about the way the case has been dropped. They didn't give the chance to, to explain himself in court, to hear the other party, the witness for the prosecution, uh, saying what they had to say. It's, it's left the whole thing um, with a very unsatisfactory conclusion. And I can fully understand him being concerned about doing something to try and resolve that issue. Mm. Uh, so he's talking about suing the, the police, effectively. Mm. Again, that seems a fairly unusual move, or, or uh, is that fairly common if people no, are, are clear? No, not, com not common at all. Very difficult to pursue. Uh, malicious prosecution, you have to show bad faith, you have to show that there really was no proper justification for making the arrest, pursuing the case, and so on and so forth. Um, and not e an easy task, but, um, you know, cases have been brought, and... Um, uh, I suppose the other way, uh, uh, I don't know the detail of the case, nobody seems to know the detail of the case, the other way would be to sue for defamation, of course, because if somebody is saying um, this happened, that would go in directly to the person making the allegation. But massively difficult, mm. uh, massively difficult. I, I think malicious prosecution is probably the only way forward. Um, that would at least bring out into the open or into, to, into it, to him and his legal advisers more information about what was going on in the background. The, the other side would have to make disclosure of their process of decision-making, what they, what they decided and when and how. I mean, the, the, the other major thing about this is the length of time is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And, of course, it's passed over a yet another election for this chap. Um, you know, we have an election this year, so it's, you know, it's quite bizarre that the whole thing seems to have uh, overarched to the, the election process. I'm not saying there's any other information available that says it's political motive. I don't know. The just the fact of the matter is, for a case to take three years, based on what he said in that interview just now, was one person's allegation. I mean, how long does it take you to interview somebody, get a statement, try and corroborate it, do the bit of corroboration, put it up, ask the other side, ask the corporations to make a decision, and crack on. It, it, uh, and what what about, the, what about the money here? Because he's substantially out of pocket, um, yeah. having had an allegation made against him, which it seems is, is not true. He's had to pay vast amounts in legal fees. Yes. What can he do about that? Well, that would be part, part and parcel of his case. If he was able to mount a, a claim for malicious prosecution, it's a monetary compensation uh, that he gets, and that would include loss of wages, uh, loss of opportunity to earn, uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, what you couldn't compensate would be the loss of an opportunity to become an MP, which um, <laughs> it might have been the position had the, he he'd just never started and he'd carried on um, in the way challenging uh, Labour, which was, was what he was up to at the time that this all uh, suddenly kicked off. Okay. Um, but yes, compensation would be the way he would deal with that. Paul, thank you. Paul Bacon, who's a retired solicitor, has worked uh, over his career on many high-profile criminal cases. We'll hear more from Jason Zadrozny after the 8 o'clock news. That interview